Okay, this is Galactic Civilizations 1.7. Um, with the new update, I'm going to play the, the Phalanoids. I had actually started about five games with Lux or Dominion, but there's so many updates that I uh, um, only got about three videos in. Uh, probably tell I uh, sound... Um, uh, or I'm losing part of my voice here, so... Um, okay, so Phalanoids here, they have the uh, Nocturnal trait. It starts with uh, uh, Manufacturing and Growth Boost, and then it uh, goes to Season of Dreaming, which is Research and Influence, and then back to uh, Manufacturing and Growth. Um, they also get uh, Higher Approval. They start off Colony Ship Flagship like everyone else. They are geared uh, towards research. They're starting areas uh, very heavily towards research. And then you also have the uh, their carbon base, so they'll have natural growth. Um, as far as they're kind of like the cats and the dogs, where you get the uh, approval bonus by having them on the same worlds as uh, other factions, and then uh, their uh, citizens tend to have higher intelligence and social. So we'll start here. Hey, they have likable, influential, but persuasive. Uh, they're militant, so they don't. Uh, they're kind of the opposite of the Luxor. They just started. Luxor love control. Uh, the moths do not. And then they're also urbanites. Uh, urbanites basically gives them the ability to uh, have lot larger populations. And then they start with a Paradise World, which is actually pretty interesting because Paradise Worlds tend to have um, higher uh, cultural input stats. But I don't know if it changes anything compared to just a normal home world. So I'll look at that here. And then they have a kind of a unique uh, ship style. So we'll get to see some of those. All right. <clears throat> For the settings here, I'm going to just leave it here. I have uh, medium, several, occasional. I did do a video on how to uh, specify the number of AIs and what uh, the civilization proximity and galaxy size, number of sectors, kind of how all that uh, works together. I didn't go into the ha star frequency, habitable planets, extreme, and resources. Those are fairly self-explanatory, but these three settings are very um, uh, misunderstood. Okay, I'm going to set to nine AI players. Now in my testing, this will give, uh, should be about two factions in each uh, uh, area. All right, so that's the intro stuff here. Okay. All right, so. Um, in 1.7, they made uh, some changes here. Um, now you start off with this Colonial Leadership Council project. Um, they did reduce the cost, so you should pretty much guarantee be able to complete it in one turn. This uh, The reason why the developers put this in is just to kind of give a, <clears throat> slow, a little bit slowly introduce you to different mechanics. Um, so turn one's not uh, pretty or too crazy. You can rush this if you want to start with a leader on the first turn, but uh, I probably won't. I'm going to rush something else here. Uh, their homeworld starts with eight technology. So this is going to be uh, uh, just even without considering what else is around it. This is a very strong research world. Now, when you're looking at whether or not someone's strong for like research, um, don't look at these tile bonuses, because uh, the, they are only a small factor. Look at this these planetary inputs. So this is uh, mineral input, which is manufacturing, tech input, which is uh, um, research, uh, wealth input, which is uh, gross income, farming input, which is food, and cultural input, which turns into influence. So these values are multiplied by whatever improvements you have here, bringing you to the uh, planetary outputs. And then you can further uh, enhance this by uh, assigning jobs here. So 
at the very least, you want to assign a job to each of the uh, leaders that are citizens, because citizens don't do anything for you. And uh, I will set these to, there's basically a choice between worker and farmer. Um, I might just do workers for now. So this uh, helps uh, maximize my early uh, or input. And then I can go to my uh, improvements here. And now one of the other changes here is if you hover over the, the bonuses per level, they were all adjusted. So it's not always best to put the improve, like in older versions, you might have put this right here on top of this research bonus. You might not do that anymore. Uh, instead, you know, because you want to put whatever tile gives you the highest bonus per level. Um, the other factor is, is, you know, you put these mainframes and or these items surrounded by other things to boost. So these are kind of the grant uh, adjacency bonuses. I like to call refer to them as givers. And then the the districts take those adjacency bonuses. They don't give too much. Uh, this is a plus one versus a plus two, but uh, they have the higher bonuses, so I call these takers. Okay, so what I've been kind of playing or doing lately in my design is I might play a place a couple districts and get kind of a general layout how I want to uh, position everything. And then I'll place my... Uh, uh, improvements around that. And you can rearrange the build queue however you wish. And then, let's say, okay, we have the capital mainframe and all these bonuses around here. Now I can say, okay, well, the capital city is a population improvement that you see up here. Um, I will, if I get every level I get, I get a plus one per level level of population cap. So this would be, this time become a 10, and then a gross income of 5% per level. So with that, uh, and then also it grants plus two everything around it. So the, uh, what I can do here is I can destroy this. Now, given what I said about the givers and takers, this might not be exactly the most optimal place, but it's, it's pretty good. So I can put it here, I get the uh, um, population bonus. Then I push a plus two over these. Eventually I'll, I'll fill these two tiles here. And then over here, um, what I can do is maybe put the industrial center here, which will have a manufacturing district. Um, probably don't need that, so. Uh, manufacturing districts, oh, and the cost of these, or the pollution on, on these was increased from 2 to 3% per tile. So, something to keep in mind there. Um, but you can kind of place these improvements here and kind of plan this out a little bit more here. So now it uh, helps increase the value of everything. And then, then uh, for this, uh, my starport... I'll probably put right here. And then, you know, this tile, and as I get in the other ones, I can put stuff that boosts the starport. So you can, you know, you kind of take advantage of this. Um, this helps uh, kind of a little bit get your uh, uh, layout here. Now, as far as this goes, this is a paradise world up here, but it doesn't have the, you know, it doesn't have the bonus because it's a core world of, um, you know, additional influence generation. But uh, influence is always pretty good here. Um, I don't have the tile here. What else can I do? I, I have the, uh, this is a tourism tile. I don't necessarily want to, you know, just because this tile has the uh, light bulb doesn't mean that I should always place my research districts on the light bulbs, or wait, this is a uh, leaf, which is agriculture, you know, you don't want to just place your improvements right where, uh, based on these icons, it just, it tells you what, uh, at a glance, what uh, is there. 
Um, it, it's not giving you any strategy. Um, so you'll see all of the floodplains have the food icon. All the jungles have the wealth icon. Stuff like that. So, kind of do this, and then, you know, now that I've kind of laid these out, I can say, okay, well, uh, you know, I went over here, and then I was like, okay, when I get terraforming, I can put that here, and then put a uh, another research, um, which will boost the, uh, these uh, files down here. What is going on? Uh, sorry, one second, I'm... Norton is having some issues with the Galsif folder here, so let's... Okay. All right, so I, I have that here uh, kind of planned out here. Now that I've kind of start, you know, I don't lay out too much at once. But now that I got this somewhat laid out, I can make a plan. So first thing I know, I'm going to uh, rush the capital mainframe um, because I start with two research, a flat two plus three percent per level, and then uh, you know right off the bat it's a don't don't worry about this number right now because it's saying when I get all these improvements it's going to be a six. You look at this upgrade number here. So. We'll put that there so I get, uh, you know, 6% plus the research. And that starts me off with a pretty good research rate at the beginning. And then after that, um, you know, they increase this rush by its five times per level. Um, so this would be a 15. Um, but I will probably rush it next turn. But when, when I know I'm going to rush something... Um, it technically is a little bit cheaper if I put it first in the queue. But I actually want to get most of that production going to uh, this industrial center. And I'll just rush this one next turn. I mean, techni well, technically get production overflow, so I guess it's not that big of a deal. But uh, it's something to keep in mind. Usually, you know, if you unless you want to make the rushing cheaper, you can uh, usually not put it in the first uh, row. Okay, um, actually, I probably won't rush because I'll do it that way. I'm, I'm learning some of the, the differences here. There's some, some things I, I don't like in the update, but uh, overall is a very, very, very good update. Um, let's see. I think down here. I don't think I'm going to do wealth on this world. I, I will do wealth somewhere, but not here. Um, I might... Uh, eventually do some food districts too. Okay, so that is uh, there. Uh, for starting, I like to start with two probes. I don't uh, typically rush colony ships. Colony ships are really bad at uh, um, scouting out um, territory. And uh, let's see, what do I have here? I have the unshield thruster. So early on, I think I'm going to rush the... Or I'm not going to rush anything. I might just do the two probes. Okay. And then as far as probes go, all these stars have different, you know, differences in what you expect for those. Uh, yellow stars are the best to initially colonize. They tend to have the most habitable worlds. Um, blue and purple tend to have... Uh, you know, you can have Precursor Anomalies. And then uh, Red, I think you have Durantium. Um, so, like, different th differences here. But usually I would say early on for your early colony ships, go to Purple Worlds or go to Yellow. Um, this time I might go Yellow. Okay, uh, I always recommend you colonize your initial sector. In fact, I usually say as long as... The inputs are decent, like three technology. Since I'm already geared for that, that would be a good choice to uh, colonize right away. Don't don't look at these like Galsa three, just because it's a class one doesn't mean it's bad. 
Um, that, that's not how this stuff works. I'll, I'll explain that a little bit later once I research this, but uh, Class 1 worlds aren't supposed to be skipped. They boost the income of your uh, core world. The, the amount of lost research, production, and everything like that, trying to, you know, scout out and, you know, you could try to race out here and take 20 turns to find that or, you know, another, you know, so many turns that get all these core worlds under your belt. You've lost so much production that you're actually behind. Um, even even if you're in a sector by itself, I do recommend that for the most part you fill out your sectors. But I do uh, for the sometimes will send out just a little bit further to get my range a little bit. But I'm not going to neglect those. Okay. So now down here, it's like okay, wait a minute. You know, saying that here, I was like okay. You know, I want to make sure I got this, but you know, also looking at this world. I don't necessarily need six farming right off the bat. Um, uh, two cultural inputs actually somewhat nice, but um, I'm, I'm not going. I'm going to skip uh, that one, and I'm going to send my uh, this colonist over uh, here. Okay, um, no anomalies, which is actually a little odd in the starting system. So we got our probes and executive orders, everything like that. Uh, we need to choose a research. So uh, in research, you, you start with colonial policies as one of the picks. Uh, I think it's a fairly unnecessary step, but that's how the game works right now. So I'm going to research that first turn so I can unlock my civilization and adjust taxes. There's just a, a lot of things here that... Okay. This is uh, the the event that I get, the season of waking. And so it tells me I'm in the season of waking and it tells me what it does. And then I under say understand. And then if I go in here, I can check manufacturing and I have a 30% manufacturing bonus. Come down here uh, for growth, I have a 3% growth bonus. Let's see, move these here. And let's see, this is first, second, third. Okay. <clears throat> so, in addition to that, you have, um, click on the orbital improvements. There's a new recruiting station. Click on that and get a, get a plus two. Um, uh, growth here. Uh, here, one second. Okay, my wife was uh, just getting ready to go take a nap, so. All right. Um, and then over here. Okay. So now this is a plus two, and I'll speed up the uh, turns. And, and uh, the recruiting station is good for anyone except for the Yor. So they do work on Luxor Dominion. In fact, they're, you really want to make sure you build those for them. Um, you'll see up here that you start off a lot more money. It's not my favorite cup of tea. I think the, uh, the initial money was fine, um, but they have increased that. Um, I'd argue you don't really need to rush, even if you could afford it early in the game. You still have to scout out these colonies you're going to lose a lot of time trying to scout with the colony ship. Even if you click on the star and see what's around there, like you can see here, uh, these stars, like in Galsif 3, the star systems are only about um, like this big. Here, let me show something here. I've been trying to get this stupid thing to work for a while, and I got it working. 
So I'm going to show it off here. So the, uh, the star systems in Galsiv 3. Really? Okay, one second. I get the scam caller in there. Uh, yeah, I'm a last nerve. I'll be right back. Sorry, I paused my recording. <laughs> All right. So uh, I didn't get that. I'm still on the same turn, but I, um, you know, basically I unlocked the leader on point course colonization here. And uh, let's, I think that's all I explained with that. I'll skip the rest. I, I've explained this in other videos. And like that, uh, let's see, leaders and... Oh yeah, uh, I did explain that in the update you have a, uh, a free leader that you start off with, uh, learning leadership, leader policies, and then you can move these now at will without the uh, approval penalty. Okay, let's uh, let me advance some turns. I won't be talking the entire time of this uh, video. Probably just try to rush out because I, I, I could literally take four hours and talk about 700 mechanics and uh, not get in past like turn 30. Okay. Um, Starbase modules or Xeno industrialization. And I will do. Neither of these. <laughs> uh, arm shuttles, plantology, artificial gravity. I think I might take artificial gravity, even though if it's it's not the primary tech here. Um, artificial gravity leads to orbital manufacturing, which gives you the starport. Okay, clicking on here, I have three colonies. I've discovered them all. I have no resources. So moving up down here. I have this colony ship already en route. I'm going to redirect it. And then around that, I have... Uh, let's see, this is a boreal, which is typically a um, decent production world. And then I have two of these, so I want to get some colony ships and make this a, into a production world. Uh, but I'll probably do have the this colonize its own uh, worlds I'll, from my home world. I'll probably uh, go a little wide. Okay. Now I've met the Torians. I might have screwed up playing around with this earlier, but because I met the Torians, actually I'm gonna wait till next turn on that. Um, I'll explain why. Um, you gain this quest for ten culture points. So once you get that, and I once you get that, and because I put the leader on the uh, Minister of Technology. Uh, you know, this is a slot. I might have screwed this up here. But if you wait to put the leader on to the Minister of Technology, uh, you should get Universal Translator in this uh, slot. So let's try it. Let's see if I screwed it up. Uh, let's get another leader for that. Come over here, and Universal Translator pops up. So you can, it's a little trick you could do to kind of uh, speed that up a tad bit. It doesn't save you that much time, but it can save you a turn or two. And then after that, I will do Hyperwave Radio. So I'll get Universal Translator, I get 10 Culture Points, Hyperwave Radio, and with some more, and uh, kind of go from there. Now, there is a bug right now. They are looking at it. 
Uh, if I trigger two events at the same time, um, only one event will fire. But I'm not going to go out of my way to optimize for that. And if I lose some events, whatever, I'll, I'm not that concerned about it. Okay, so we have a uh, Class 16 world with uh, Ampimetheus Pollen. I've made up names here. I'm just checking. It's Saturday, so we get a lot of updates on the Discord. Okay. Um, I highly recommend if you're not already there and you're probably anyone watching or watching it live here is going to be on the Discord. But if you're seeing this, do recommend jo joining the Discord. Uh, uh, for Galsa 4. Um, I'll try to remember to put the uh, link in the uh, notes here. But um, you can get a lot of uh, updates. Um, especially on the weekend. The weekend tends to be uh, Frog Boy uh, really enjoys the game, so he does a lot of his own coding. And sometimes he breaks things. But he does some really good stuff on the weekend, and you can kind of see the stuff live. All right. All right, so... Oh, sorry, I forgot my order. I might pick up Hyperwave Radio. This will never come up as a uh, research bonus, so I'm not going to wait for it. And uh, it's a very useful one because you get your second policy slot. So that's going to be my next priority. I'll, uh, yeah, I'm going to do that. I kind of want that. Never mind. I'm going to do orbital manufacturing first since it's up. Cause, and then I'll go grab the other one. Okay, so I got the 10 culture points. Uh, giving me 17. This is also the window where I get... Uh, so I use seven to do my primary policy, which I don't even remember. Oh, progressivism. So, and this is uh, Eureka. Actually, I've been meaning to show this off. A lot of people don't know how that research uh, gives you, it, it overflows. They, they believe it doesn't. And so we'll, we'll take a look at this. It's perfect time too. Um, so I go to Orbital Manufacturing. I go over here, it says 43 um uh points so then i go in here and i pick up eureka and like you know a lot of people are like hey what gives it didn't do anything if i click on that it'll update and uh let's say i've learned the tech from doing that then what you do is you back out and you go back in you learn your next tech back out go back in and this is really important when you're dealing with uh, Quantum Leap. And uh, actually, it looks like just Quantum Leap now. I thought there was another one here, but it looks like you removed it. So when you're doing con Quantum Leap, you can get a lot of text. You just got to keep going out and going back in. Um, I don't know if it'll change, It's but it's, uh, it's good to know it's there. Okay, now, see, I have so much money with the new change here, because I don't know what I do with them. Because, um, honestly, I think it works better if I don't have this much money, because uh, I make better choices. Makes you tempt to just buy a lot of stupid stuff. <laughs> All right, so I got orbital manufacturing done. Now I want hyperwave radio. Um and the reason why I wanted orbital manufacturing, as I was saying earlier, a starport. So, slight benefit for this. I can pay that Durantium. Go in here. Uh, the the bazaar's unlocked the Universal Translator. Go over here, place my starport, put it in the front of the queue. Uh, front or front of the queue ish. This is where you get like into some silly choices. Because then I was like, oh, I could just rush by and finish that off. And I'm like, eh, not 
the more you save here, the better, I think. Uh, money towards leaders tends to be one of the better decisions here. Okay, so I also have this uh, colony here. So let's find a governor. Now there's a bug. I don't know who is... Oh, literally a bug. Um, but uh, this may not be a slumlord. Um, I want to find someone with good diligence and good social. Probably you, and then at least 50 uh, loyalty. Because that... This should go down by 20 points, which is 45. And then uh, as long as it's above 30 is what you're looking for. Okay, so that gives me another core world. Now, why that core right at the beginning? Well, especially early on, you want to get these cores so your pop uh, systems start growing. And I'm pretty confident that I can uh, turn this into a useful colony pretty quick. But I really just did it so my colony is growing. And then I'll get a recruiting station. Sorry, one moment. Oh, the joy to be me. Allergies and all kind of problems today. Okay, so... Okay, now planning this out here. Now, in the past, you, as I was saying earlier, you may look at this and be like, okay, I'm going to put a tech uh, uh, item here, like tech capital. That, that, well, actually, that might... Nope, not even tech capital is best there. You want to do the districts. Well, I'm not going to do that right now. I will do the approval bonus uh, fairly early. In fact, uh... See, this is where I, extra money, I, I just, I don't need to rush this bus. Let's see, well, I, I mean, I do have it, but, um, that'll be what, 7% approval? Well, I'll think about that. Um, actually, what I want to do is I want to build a shipyard, I want to rush that shipyard. And then go into the shipyard here and start the, uh, I don't know the names, Territory Conquest. Start one of those. Actually, let's do two. So this world will colonize these two. And uh, if you played Master of Ryan 2, or did two do this? Maybe I'm thinking of uh, one of the clones where you had the um, you had your colony ship that was interstellar colony ships, and then you had your kind of your local ones. Um, so I've designed my uh, I should actually call this the interstellar colony ship. That'd be better. This one has um, unshielded thruster on it, so it's a lot faster. Um, where this one's the, uh, oh wait, this one just has the base module, so I can, it's cheaper. So I usually have those two colony ship designs. You can put a probe <coughs> module on it. It's actually optimal to put probe modules on it. However, I'm trying to get the probe module nerfed, so I'm trying not to work into my playstyle. The probe is just, it's, uh, by putting it everywhere, there's it's uh, it's literally the best choice. Okay, hyperwave radio. All right, so I got that done here, and uh, um, let's pick my tech. We have improved life support, xeno industrialization, and armed shuttles. Um, can totally see that the uh, research speed. Uh, planetology leading into xenobiology to get Colonial Clinic is a good choice. Um, but this one will come up fairly often, so I'm going to wait. 
over here, leadership recruiting will not show up as a bonus here. Um, it gives another policy slot, but I don't really have need for that. Many. Well, I could buy more governors, but uh, I'll, I'll probably skip that for now. And then I'm gonna just I'm gonna get arm shuttles, and then I can uh, uh, get a ten approval bonus on these two colonies. Okay, and this is this I can do research grants is pretty good. But I might do experimental drives, especially early on. Okay, and we'll do a f fast colony ship. Now this takes one more turn than the other, but I'm not, I don't need to worry about it because I'll save by having a faster colony ship. <clears throat> I'll get to the distant stars faster, saving me that one turn, extra turn production cost. And come down here. I think I missed, yeah, I missed something. Oops, oh well. Um, arm shuttles is done. And starbase modules for space weapons or Xeno research. I'm gonna do Xeno research. Um, now, one thing, I can't believe I missed it. I had this timing down pretty good, but I missed my draft colonists. Ah, well. Okay, and uh, I'm just putting, stationing a, uh, a ship in each of these colonies. And then that, uh, eliminates their, uh, um, penalty. Uh, we are unprotected. That will go away when I get a ship in their orbit. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't even plan this out. What was I doing? All kind of messing stuff up here. Uh, this is going to be manufacturing world. This is uh, probably... Let me just go with that. Uh, let's get one more Durantium. And that colonial generator is much better. This is one of the few things where improvements better on one of these uh, tiles, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Um, I'm going to do something that's going to make some people cry. I'm going to destroy that. <laughs> and I just, I don't use those resources that much. I'm starting to get away from having it waste a a good adjacency bonus. And uh, let's see. This has a rush cost of 125. So we'll rush that. And coordination beacon. This is a good one to put on that tile. I might change my mind where that goes, actually. Uh, we'll leave that right now. I'm thinking <coughs> this actually might not be as strong as I thought, so no, I've changed my mind. Okay, another thing here is uh, this is my messed up Torian uh, race. So I forgot to delete this. Uh, I don't even know what he has right now. He could be problematic. Uh, it was by test uh, AI. So ancient and devout. It's not a normal Torian. It's an ancient devout one. Um, with nihilism, cruel, and uh, xenophobic. I mean, it's it's completely screwed up in its uh, design. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. But I, guess I forgot to delete that. I was doing a lot of testing the other day, and that's what I used it for. Okay, so I always do open borders, and probably can do 60 here. And I, uh, I mean, I don't even, like, part of it, too, is I, I was pretty good about making money, so 
I was always trained to get more money from these guys, but now with starting uh, capital, we may not necessarily go that route each time. Uh, let's see, I'm going to do a persuade. You might as well do it. It's, doesn't hurt anything to take it. Um, it's probably not going to be worth that much more. Okay, since I went around this, I want every little penny that time. Normally I don't care if it's less than 10, whatever. I want, uh, so open borders makes them happier. This, and then we'll click accept. Okay. Um, I'm not going to make friends with this guy. <laughs> We'll, we'll do open borders, but I'm not I'm not going on my way uh, to be friendly with them. Uh, let me send this to this artifact here. Two Taiwan citizens, a Taiwan leader. And uh, approval bonus for 50 turns. I'm going to do the two citizens. Because they have relatively low expectations. And they are happier if they, uh, they're on a share a world with someone else. I don't remember if he, are these guys annoyed by them. Okay. I do have a little bit, some penalties here because they're all overworked. Now I'm not coming in here every single time to micro all these guys, but uh, you can come in here and I could train them, but I'm running out of control, so I'm not going to do it. And what's over here? Just this world here. Um, coming down to there. So my evil Torians, I think, are up here. Okay, and Innovation Complex Unlocked. Um, let's see. Tech Capital, I might make this the Tech Capital. Innovation Complex, Illyrium, Five Reese, okay. And then, so this, this is uh, one of the really good giving ones. And I actually, uh, no, I'll keep it. Um, let's buy an Illyrium. Right here, so I'm not I'm not worried about this tourism, and I don't want to do it down here or up here because then I won't get I want to get the full bonuses around this. And uh, I think probably is be best to get some um, supply ships. How many do I need here? Three. Although I might not be building supply ships for a while. There's so many, so much uh, growth going on. Okay, Xeno research is complete. Uh, defensive studies, 
kind of grabbed this one. Some of the other stuff I picked earlier didn't pop up, but uh, get this fairly early. Or, yeah, let's get that. Not change my mind. I need star base modules. There's some Durantium that I want. Alright, and then there's one world here, and it has a Mosantium deposit. Uh, looks like a wealth type world, but it is isolated. And then this is a Durantium cloud. So that looks like a good production world down here. Um, let's see. The Taiwan kind of can stick around for a while. Um, I don't even mind having more of them. Uh, okay, so... I think I've been actually starting to step on my highest expectations person. If it's going to be a core world, which this one is, I put a kind of a lower one. Okay, now I'll pick defensive studies. Okay, and that unlocks. Probably up here. Okay, so we're coming down here with that and leave ship buried. Uh, what did I say during this? Oh, that is a junky colony for a starting. I don't even know what leeching field does. Just beta 14. <laughs> Let's try it. Um, okay, now I want to get uh, some colony ship spam going on here. Psycho Slayers. Defensive Studies, Space Weapons, Quantum Computing. And the Space Weapons. Okay, increases to gain um, uh, trade license will be worth more in the long term. Do I get some trade routes? I, I'm really bad about building those. Um, evasive. This is a, I feel like is an unnecessary extra step on the way to these. I think it should have been just rolled into defensive studies. I uh, probably will do that though. Oh my goodness. One moment. I got these scammers, I just finally blocked them. They they keep chain calling me, it's like and I just tell them they're idiots and but at this point I'm like, okay, I'm tired of the game, I'm just blocking them. Alright, Nocturnal season of dreaming. So this is the 
the bonus that you get now. Sometimes this screen effort doesn't pop up, but now I no longer have a growth and a manufacturing bonus. Um, you, you may notice I had a pretty healthy growth rate. Well, now that's gone. And now I'm into research and influence bonuses. So now my tech learning rates can be a lot higher. And, uh, you know, it's a good time to add uh, research. All right. Let me send you down here. Actually, probably go over here so I can grab Saren 1. Okay, two worlds here. Oh, I have two probes going to the exact same spot. That was uh, inefficient. Okay, so we have the uh, my evil Torians. Uh, at least I have a colony up here. Now I, I can run around in their territory I want because I got that open borders treaty. So I'm going to use it to kind of scout them. Uh, deep in space. Uh, investigation mission, minus one relations. Um, I've never seen this event before. So let me try the event. I've already started off with uh, decently good turns with terms with them. Uh, so I can take a hit. Uh, oh, and then I can get a leader here. Let's see. So by assigning a diplomat, you get diplomat capital income. And social six. I wish it actually said the... Uh, the, their social score over here along with their traits. In fact, that will probably be something I uh, point out. Social... Probably do you, but you're irresponsible in money. What else? That's a governor trait. Oh, this one steals research. Okay, then I want that one. So now that I have this year, um, I'll occasionally get, uh, I don't know how it works, if it's a flat amount or if it steals whole tax. And whether or not it even has the uh, feature to begin with. It looks like it kept it, so it says failed med school. All right, so let's do a trade here. And Arner Spice. How many credits will you give me for that? 130. Okay, that's good. And I don't have any diplomat capital yet. Uh, just want to check other things here. I don't think I might do anything else, so we'll trade that. Okay, and this screen's fairly new. A lot more information. You can kind of see their stats. I really like the screen. Best part is uh, in, you have your trade and then you have your speak to. A separate here. Try to think if I want to change my mind and go and make friends with them. Well, okay, so I, I gave them. 50 or he gave me about 50 60 credits this is about that same amount if i uh give him it back in tribute so and then that so next turn we'll see a few more bonuses i'm not gonna do friends like i'll probably get good relations with them but i'm not gonna make them my friends Leaching field. Mine. Oh. Okay, so the enemy fleet is spice 50%. But I'm not going to do it on a flagship. That'd be a waste. Um, I'll 
also, I have Commander Ship Stout. You notice this one's disabled, and the reason is, is it's uh, due to a bug. I don't have the mass uh, on a fighter to recruit them, so I have to get um, another upgrade for that. And influence, influence, influence. These are, I think they're all the same. So, uh, whichever one looks best, I guess. Um, I'm not really concerned about their weapon stats, so I'm going to get the cheaper one. And, well, I might, yeah, I'm going to buy them both. I don't need the Master of Exploration right now. And then that gives me a few more commander ships. I might try to watch for that bug, so on turn 20, if I don't uh, ADHD out, I will uh, see if I can... Uh, so at turn 19, I want to remember to save. Well, actually, if I go in the turn, and as long as I don't forget. Giant subterranean. So three harmony crystals. That's a good decision here. 20. Huh? <laughs> yes. Yes, please. I don't, I don't even know what that penalty was anymore. I wasn't going to pay attention. I'm getting loyalty. I don't even think there's a point in doing loyalty on those guys. I don't think about it. Uh... This leader has a hunter in right off the bat. Neat. Okay, evasive tactics. Okay, and this unlocks Space Doctrine, Subspace Scanning, and Precursor Anomalies. I'm going to do Space Doctrine because it gives another policy slot. And it also unlocks the Starship Specifications, which is actually not the one I want. There's one I got earlier, though, that I'll take. Uh, let's see. I know I need at least come down here. Oops. One more turn. Uh, I'll do mining on Durantium. You need a lot of it. Okay. Going down here with you, coming over here, and I do want this uh, colony here. Uh, why did I see that screen? Oh, these don't count as, uh... Does this say flagship? Let me see here. Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay. That was my bad. Uh, it's... Core world's within a range, so I need to... Maybe come right over here. And now, th this... Core world's in range, so I should see this, uh... Yeah, he's right here. Probably do that right now. I, I'll, I'll probably find a different one. And then I don't want this to pop up anymore. So I'll hit the N key for send, uh, to hide him. I could also... Uh, well, it's actually harder. If I found pirates, I can use him to attack pirates and stuff. For some experience. <laughs>
Okay, space doctrine's done. I do want planetology. And shipyard stimulus. They still haven't found their home world. <laughs> still first in military might. Well, it's only turn 19, but still I would start thinking I someone would be... Okay, you gotta wiggle a little bit. There we go. And Durantium gets the mining starbase. I also haven't done this. Uh, Durantium. Let's come over here. And I don't need to know which one's which. I'll just name them the same thing. Most colonized worlds, is the AI doing better at this, or...? It might be a little bit better. I'm still... Oh, and I, I'm not never the first anyways. I don't rush... AI probably rush all of its money away right at the get-go. Uh, what's her treasury? Yeah, that probably was a colony ship there. And that's probably a colony ship right there, too. <laughs> okay, so this... We have a food issue. However, this world that I have now, it's a good time to take that, and then I'll add myself six more food. Or five, or four. Because of pollution. Uh, let's see. This is a precursor world. So, can I, one manufacturer, that's one manufacturer and not one minerals. Um, there's a difference. One manufacturing is probably not even worth it. Um, let's do a little kinetic attack. A okay. colonist is infected. Have a bisonia pod like creatures. Plus one usable tile. What's this? Uh, 17. That's not going to be worth it. Um, Okay, got two colony ships ready. So it looks like one of my worlds is getting a little bit better off. Um, armor defensory, quantum computing, or asteroid mining. I haven't seen any amazing asteroid belts, so let me just go xenobiology. Okay, uh... These are really not that great for cores, at least right away. Um, this colony ship can go over here, though, and I'll make that a core. This one, I should have made it. I'll make a core. Okay, so I don't have any more leaders uh, available here, so let's... But I want that governor... You're a flagship, you're not. 
I think I might take away, fire you, take away that ship, and make them a uh, leader. I can always do the ship again later. All right, so we have the uh, Lyrium Extractor. Put that on the list. Um, Durantium Cloud acts like a Durantium node. They can upgrade, but it also adds 10% kinetic attack. Uh, build Shipyard, Rush Shipyard. And then, uh, let's see. Um, because this is a Dranton cloud, I won't be able to grow. Oh, there we go. Colonial generator, supply depot. And we'll set that up like that and kind of go from there but uh this will be a good manufacturing world oh it's completely spaced out watching for that uh event bug um, even more so, they went to turn 21 instead of stop at turn 19. So it's probably not even on my auto saves. That's all. No, it's all good. Um, let's go to this artifact here. And let's get the manufacturing or mining world first. So now, um, so we have our colony here. And if we hover over it, three of our mi minerals comes from the world itself. And then you got uh, 1.7. Now a lot of people are like, well, wait a minute, there should be no decay. This is within five tiles. There's always decay. Uh, there will be a 2% decay until you're past like 10 tiles and then it decays 2% per tile. The only time you don't get decay is if it, if the, whatever the inputs of the world that you're colonized. So if you go off world, there's a decay. Okay, and then we have uh, another colony ship coming fairly quick. And what are we doing for population? Okay, so our, oh, this is that new orbital thing that I just got. So right over here, I will build a supply ship, which I don't know what they're called right here. Siege. Construct Starbase. Supply Social. Okay. And we probably should consider getting more of these. Okay, so we got, uh, I could sell something for Friendly Planet Tech Finder. I... Oh, Tech Ray of Target Planet. Versus 400, yeah, I might get the, and then I will use this new artifact on my home world. And then now, it's a, it's a base of 11, and uh, once I get this, I need some supply ships, but once I get that going, uh, that world's going to be really nice. In fact, I might, pretty soon here, start getting other worlds to build the colony ships. So 
artifact down here. <coughs> Okay, over here we found a monster. Um, they now group better, but uh, more importantly, they don't attack probes, so you don't have to worry about losing them. And just tracking uh, monsters. You know, biology is complete. Now, th this one's a criminal. So, criminals are... I'd rather put them on core worlds than I would uh, on a colony. Energy deflection here once again. Extreme colonizations, yeah. Energy deflection or yeah. I'm f so I'm first on research, which is no s surprise um, with uh, my home world, and uh, first on influence. Okay, looks like they're up for a trade. Oops, not that. Um, Arner Spice. I think you get a little bonus if it's your last item, but I'm not sure. Uh, what else can I trade you for? Antimatter is always good. Delirium. Promethean. Oh, is this... I think I might just... I think this is... One second, I think that might be bugged. I just want to make sure. Otherwise, I'm getting a lot of capital for... Okay, much better. It was bugged. I was like, there's no way I'm getting 80 for 5 diplomat capital. What was this set to? Uh, I think I still will trade the spice and get more credits. <laughs> Alright, we got a colony ship over there. I'm just trying to take inventory. I got so many colony ships going around. Uh, it's around here. These energy collection armor defense isn't that big of a deal. Well, actually, I gotta think of this different now. They uh, increase the mass of um, shields but I don't think I need both of them right away um, let's see I'm gonna take weapon systems I got six uh, there are about seven more turns until my event thing pops up And, oh, my, um, oh, that's a fast constructor, not a, yeah, so. Okay. 
I keep forgetting what that does. Okay, so we got that. We'll take this world. Okay, now I got my core, and so this is, makes these stro well, <laughs> relatively stronger. This one's for, for, going to be fairly. Oh, never change that. Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, let's see, no. What was I doing with this world? I have no idea. Oh, I think I was leaning towards manufacturing. Uh, which is probably going to be the case. It's not going to be great at it. So that will take that. And... Hunter and Influence, and Snuggler Colony. This actually might not be a bad one to do technology. This looks like another good candidate for a research world. And then uh, the decay is fairly high, so I can afford yet another governor. Imperious one. Okay, and I want to do a tech world here. Maybe put the galactic mainframe on this one. And uh, with that, probably come up here. Put a colonial generator here, up here. I may not leave this as uh, any, like this level of manufacturing, but. I do that for now. Okay, this is, uh, I can't afford to rush this. One second, let me just... I planned it out. I don't need to do it again. I'll just, um, put maybe one to mark it there. And maybe one more. Now I, I know that that's probably that cluster. And let's see, Supply Depot. Pick a Babylon. Do I have... And my home world's the only one that's got... Decent culture input. Okay, come down. Let's see, check up here. Probably play 10 more minutes, and then I'm going to say I'm a liar, because I said, I'm not going to sit here and talk the entire time. <laughs> and then I talked the entire time. Uh, Railguns. Like, literally all the weapons up to, like, railguns are the exact same, except for slight differences in cost. Arner's Legacy. This is the... Uh, the... Uh, spore. All right, so we got this really amazing core world. Um, so let's take a chance that we spore. Something nice here. Yeah, there we go. Added two more minerals, uh, or four more minerals and two more uh, 
technology. Um, are we, I think after that one completes, I might just focus on, uh, oh, I need to do, um, ships at some point very quick here. Although my, I mean, the, the only AI in the sector with, oh, that's right, there's only two because I optimized it. Uh, the only AI in my sector uh, now really likes me, so. Okay, fast colony ship. Uh, oh, it looks like he spawned another one. Quantum computing. Don't have the money. I, I, I think it might be time to almost start preparing to go down tourism. Oh, let's get uh, directed energy weapons. And let's see. So I think some players, will, they may, well, this is only turn 26, I think. But uh, you may sometimes look at this and be like, oh, this is, uh, there's not much space here, but these are all fairly strong uh, planets. And then uh, I think I'll play up until the cycle change. This is its own world, right? Or did I did I core this? Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, I'm looking at so one mineral, two. Let's do two minerals, so this can grow or build up. It looks like the AI found. Uh, I'm gonna guess Illyrium. Now they're heading towards something of mine. I say mines because it's all my stuff. So if they everything they take is or take it from me. Scrap trade networks. Where are you going with this? I have no idea where they oh, Sentinel. There's two Sentinel shipyards. Okay, and then I will send, I don't think I'm, okay, so I want manufacturing on here, and then I have a supply ship ready to go, so let's do manufacturing, let's do three of these, do two more, or another three. And then that, so each of these, so if I look over here, I have seven stored goods. I believe these add 75. So and then that will finish the supply depot, which will give me 5% uh, approval, plus uh, buffs kind of things around it. And... Uh, and then I can start buying more of these, which will speed up my manufacturing, which will allow me to get more supply ships to kind of rush this stuff. Oh, this is uh, the event here, so. Um, yep. I'm going to... Declare war on the Psycho Slayers, I said. I am such a liar. Except for 
where their colors are all screwed up. I, I got Drengent, it's, it's all over the place. I'm going to ride a little bit longer than I would normally on the, uh, the low, uh, what am I trying to say, the, uh, oh, low military trade networks, okay. Okay, so kinetic weapon enhancements. Um, I think I'm going to do leadership recurring now so I can start unlocking my think tanks. Okay, so I got a uh, trade ship, so I'm going to just send it over here and ah, oh, that's right. I'm going to okay because the AI this is one thing I want them to change here we're going to design a freighter start new design this is one area where the probe module is decent is Oh, the uh, ship designer is new. That's right. Okay, so when you come in here, you may notice you don't have the option to pick your design. Well, you got to go into enter design mode if you want to do that. Otherwise, you can just start designing. Now, these are all use the wrong icons here, but I can find the design that I want to do. Supply freighter. Okay. And then I can, uh, I can if I want, I can go freeform and design the ship if I want. Where I can leave cosmetic mode, come back to this, and uh, go to... Now, when I double click on this cargo module, it's going to probably be right here. Okay. Now, the reason why it's there is whoever designed the ship, when they save their ship, it remembers where you put things, and those become hard points for different types of uh, modules. Okay, and then we got uh, um, let's do a probe module. Okay, oh, good point. Now, so now I clicked on the probe module. Let's say I want to, I want a point where it goes. You know, well, you don't got the little uh, arrows anymore, and the reason is, is you got to come down here to options and go to advanced edit mode. Click done. It's and then uh, pick uh, the module that you want. So we'll do probe. Hit spacebar if you want to get the those to appear, and then I can position like before the latest update. So that looks kind of dumb. Um, probe module. Okay, and then one more mass, which can't do anything with that mass really, so we'll call it the Interstellar Freighter. Okay, and I know for a fact I have no use for the default freighter, so I'm going to hide it. And then take this here and uh, they it sounds like they're going to enable upgrades but it is actually in the game you can click on the rally point new rally point click on the location you're at you must be the only uh, it must be the only ship in that on that rally point oh tell me I'm not a liar oh yeah then you click on the rally point Click Upgrade, and now we can make it an interstellar freighter. 
and click close. And they, like I said, they're talking about actually, uh, you know, initially said they weren't going to do upgrades, but now I think just with how the game design has changed, I think it makes sense for them to bring back the uh, upgrades. And then I'm going to come over here, colonize this for three more minerals. Okay, and then I have this colony ship. Uh, let's see. Don't really have anything in range up here. Probably head out that. Oh, wait. Okay, so they got a black hole or uh, antimatter in there. Okay, and uh, it looks like there's a friendly faction over here. When I say friendly, I mean, you know, they're uh, guarding my new planet, you know, taking care of the fa or flora and fauna. And uh, I'm just going to just kind of come up to him and kindly ask, you know, for the keys to the planet and I will, uh, you know, feel the uh, grass between my toes. Leadership recruiting is done. Uh, let's see, there's so many texts to research. How am I doing with um extreme colonization? So two worlds, one of them being a core. This world here is could be just crazy good. Okay, so I, I've got I still let's see. It's going to be about three turns before I use up all that uh, supply ship goods. So let's do, in fact, it's probably four turns. I need to get a, uh, colony ship, where is it? Colony ship over here. Let me colony ships. Yeah, okay, so I'll do that. All right, free trade. Not yet, I, don't, I can't take advantage of that. Genius grants. Every core world gets an additional research point. Is that one point? I think it is. Uh, I'm not going to do asteroid mining. Um, uh, let's do the air stellar cabinet. Okay, this now is available and I can actually move it somewhere. So I'm going to move that uh, probably to this core world. This is that freighter that I upgraded. And then this colony ship uh, will probably be here. What's crazy is I'm about to hit the uh, season awakening again, which will give me more growth and I can just start swallowing up this whole sector here. Because <laughs> now that I'm upgraded... Uh, let's see, I almost think it's might be a good idea to turn on land exploitation and really get the money going, but I'll, I'll have tourism close enough. Not even the most populous citizen. Okay. 
All right, time on, buddy. All right, so this is the uh, their world here. Now, minor. this is a minor civilization. You can uh, click on speak to, and you can see what they look like and kind of what's on their world. Um, but I might just probably declare war and take that world for myself fairly soon. In fact, what do I need for that? Maybe two siege and something else. Also, and, and I, I'm seeing that I need some military ships because I got those monsters and get a point where I, I need to. Okay, invite leaders. Hold here one second. Yeah, I'm going to do invite leaders now. Where do I do? Now nah, I'm going to do invite leaders. I think I'm done with the free colony ships. Okay, I'm oh, sorry, losing my mind here. Come back in here, and we have an embezzler. But uh, they can give us some money from time to time. Um, I have the negotiator. Increases the value of deals. So I got two uh, pretty strong choices for diplomats. Uh, toxic. That's the opposite of that. And brilliant, which this will be my minister of technology. Um, and then we got leadership recruited with the Free Mind Center. So I want to at least put one in there, if not a few of them. So you'll this was nerfed. Down a little bit, plus it increases, oops, one second, plus it increases uh, maintenance. And I might be keeping an eye on this maintenance cost because I, I don't think these bonuses are the best choices because if you have good tourism, you probably don't care about maintenance. But uh, it was a, a suggestion that they did, so... And got the leader here for a good research bonus. And then do another one at the Free Mind Center. And the Free Mind Center gives, so you have your tur your uh, own galaxy bonus, which is the square root of all your tiles that you own. And then uh, times your tourism percent, which is 2%, giving you... Uh, 0.86, and then that goes into your income here and uh, all your wealth multipliers. So it actually, I don't have anyone really built up for wealth right now, but I'm about to really expand into it. Now, because that's not actually looking like it's going to make that much of a difference at this point, I'm going to remove them from that uh, population cap, mining manufacturing and approval science and manufacturing uh, governors I have two but there's a third world what is that so there's you two are you feeding into the home world again oh that's right that's a kind of garbage world here I'm thinking I'm just going to leave. Yeah, I'm going to leave those. Um, what do we have? A use for all this stuff here. Let me give them a sh ship again and...
I guess I did I put yeah, of course I did. Of course. I'm gonna put anyone in there. I'm gonna put the uh really high social guy. Okay. Now I get the commandership again. And then this increases influence, which uh I'm gonna just hit N to or here, let's move it quite there. Hit N. Okay, and then uh, this is the turn before the season of dreaming. Or no, we're in season of dreaming, season of awakening. Okay, interstellar cabinets unlocked. I'm a little bit... Oh, I never canceled my uh, repeat order on my uh, production. So I got... Uh, we'll cancel that and set you... And... Okay, now I want to, this is my production phase. Um, I forget how this, I go with this. It's a colonial bureaucracy and then the uh, Colonial bureaucracy unlocks political capital, which unlocks the Ministry of Tourism position. Okay. All right, and then here, and there's... Yeah, let's see, uh... Maybe for lack of something else, I'm gonna put... Or do I go? Let's go this way. And it's coming over here. And I cannot afford that upgrade. Oh, yes, I can actually. Um. Okay, let's see. I need to think on a couple of my worlds. I want to um, keep doing colony ships, and then others I want to uh, start doing some supply ships. Because I'm not worried about him attacking. Uh, exploration Treaty. This is always good, and he gives me a bunch of stuff for it. So I'll take a snuggler colony. is a little expensive. But I really want it. Um, he's kind of broke, but uh, there's a workaround. Can do credits for months, since I don't think he's going to uh, uh, backstab me. Me good. And then twelve times was it fifty? Is what six hundred credits? And idle shipyard. I think I need to start working on. I got enough colonies for now. I'll, I'll let's see. I will build colonies with you and probably you down here. And then this one's gonna switch over to um, uh, work on the um, plan itself. I call it what's this thing called architect no oh provision I should remember that provision port to buyer Let's 
servant. Uh, let's three loyalties. I can guess you don't care. No, you don't care. Little shipyard for Imperius. Let's get a couple of colony ships. Okay, and do I have the pop? Nope, not yet. Oh, we have uh, see. Okay, colonial bureaucracy. Uh, political. There's a lot to do on this. Oh, I didn't get the little thing pop up here. Um, there's a season change and. Probably planetary stimulus. Stack a lot of bonuses, but if I hover over here, this should be... Oh, it didn't. I wonder if the... Uh... Oh, no, it says Season Awakening at the bottom. Okay. So... Now is the point where I I can really uh, consolidate all my uh, building to uh, upgrade my colonies is pretty quickly and then expand. But uh, let me just wrap up the turn until it pops up here and then I think I'm going to step away for... Uh, at least uh, much of the afternoon. I might come back tonight. I'm not sure. Okay, so I got that. I'm going to go grab this world here. And... I wonder how many colony ships I have, because it's like, okay, I look at this, I'm at 16 colonies on turn 33. Um, but I think I have a ton of... Colony ships here, uh, let's see. That finished up. I'm almost done with the manufacturer in here. How's my pollution? Oh, I can still fill... Put a lot more. Let's see, we got, uh, let's probably two, and then I can do one more, and then I think I'm done with manufacturing on this world. Then maybe wealth on this, the upper half here. So we'll do that here. And then trade network. How does this one work now? Is this still kind of garbage like before? Bonus per level, gross income. 3%, 4%, 5%, 6%, 7%, 8%, 9%, 10%, 11%, 12%, 13%, 14%, 15%, 16%, 17%, 18%, 19%, 20%, 21%, 22%, 23%, 24%, 25%, 26%, 27%, 
two percent. Yeah, the trade network is just not good. It'll probably put it down anyways, but uh it's in fact no, it's it's really not worth taking. Uh, okay, well, I think I'm going to wrap up now. Um, you know, thanks for hanging out. And y'all have a good day.